Hello, kindergarten. It's Mr. Dunn again, and we're going to read another story today called Little Prickles, which was written and illustrated by 7th grade students of the Montessori Middle School in Norwalk, Connecticut. Little Prickles the porcupine cried to his mommy, No one likes to play with me. I'm too prickly. I hate my sharp pointy quills. Oh, my dear little Prickles, you need your quills to keep you safe, his mommy said softly. One day they may come in handy, and I think your quills make you look quite handsome, said Mama Prickles. So, little Prickles went off to another lonely day at school. Nobody would tag him when they played tag. Ouch! Nobody would go on the slide with him. Ouch! Ouch! He never got tapped for duck, duck, goose. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Other kids weren't ducks or geese, and they got tapped. He wished he never had quills. Even Stinky the Skunk was more fun to play with. At least he didn't hurt. So he sat and sulked and was very, very grumpy. When Speedy the Turtle asked if he wanted to go swimming, Lil Prickles just grumbled, Go away! I'm too prickly! And when Slimy the Salamander asked if Lil Prickles wanted to go play on the swings, all Slimy heard was, Go away! I'm too prickly! And when Quacker the Duck asked if he wanted to play checkers, the answer was once again, Go away! I'm too prickly! He answered them all without ever looking up in his grumpy, grumpy voice. One day at school, Mrs. Hoot was teaching them how to write the alphabet. The best way to write well, said Mrs. Hoot, is to have a nice, thin, sharp stick. If any of you have toothpicks at home, they work very well. You just dip the stick in ink and... Wait, screeched Little Prickles. I have tons of nice, thin, sharp quills that would work perfectly. But you need those to keep you safe, Little Prickles, reminded Mrs. Hoot. But I have so many. It's okay, Mrs. Hoot, said Little Prickles. So everyone crammed around Little Prickles, but not too close. And one by one, they each pulled out a quill. Little Prickles beamed from ear to ear. At home that night, Miss Mama Prickles asked, Little Prickles, what happened to your quills? It seems like some are missing. Oh, Mama, it was the best day at school. I gave everyone a quill to write with. They came in handy just like you said, he exclaimed. That wasn't quite what I meant by handy, Little Prickles. Your quills are an important part of you. They're what makes you, you. The next morning at school, Little Prickles heard, I broke my quill. Can I have another? I lost my quill. Can I have another? My mommy wants one. My daddy wants one. My sister wants one. And so one by one, Little Prickles gave away more and more and more quills until he only had three quills left. By the time Mrs. Hood arrived at the classroom, she gasped. Little Prickles, what has happened to all your quills? She asked with a trembling voice. I gave them away to all my new friends, Little Prickles blurted out happily. You did what? stammered Mrs. Hoot, but little Prickles, look at your nice pink skin. You're a very tasty meal for a hungry fox now. And all his happiness to have new friends, little Prickles hadn't realized just how few quills he had left. He swallowed a big lump in his throat. He sat by himself and felt scared and sad. Mrs. Hoot was right. Without his quills, he was a nice tasty treat for a big mean animal. Without his quills, he didn't feel like a porcupine. Without his quills, he didn't feel like himself anymore. Two big tears spilled down his cheeks. Mrs. Hoot saw his tears and spoke softly to the class. Little Prickles was very kind and generous to give everyone quills and more quills, and even more quills. He shared parts of himself with all of you. Mrs. Hoot turned to Little Prickles and said, You don't need to give away everything that is important to you to be liked. You can be liked for who you are, quills and all. But nobody likes me, Mrs. Hoot, cried Little Prickles. The class looked confused. Goggles the raccoon spoke up. It wasn't your prickly quills that we didn't like. It was because you were always so grumpy. When we asked you to play, you always grumbled, Go away, I'm too prickly. I thought no one ne wanted to be near me, muttered Little Prickles. Buzzy the bee chimed in. Being a bee isn't easy either. I have a stinger that can hurt too. But there are still lots of games that I can play with my friends. We may not want to get too too close to you but we'd still like to be your friend you would asked little prickles yes 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 yelled the whole class little prickles could not stop the huge grin that appeared on his face 
It is much better to smile than it is to be sad or grumpy. Now what are you going to do with you, Little Prickles, asked Miss, Mrs. Who, looking at the big pink tummy. Little Prickles' classmate knew exactly what to do. From that day on, they promised to keep Little Prickles safe until his new quills grew back. Every day they formed a circle around Little Prickles and walked him all the way home to safety. And Little Prickles happily joined in all the games that he could play with, with his friends. It took a while for Little Prickles' quills to grow back. When he looked like a porcupine again, Mom... Mama Prickles said, Little Prickles, I have something for you. She plucked a quill from her side and said, Take this and use it wisely. Every time you write with it, remember, it's what makes you special. Little Prickles carried the quill carefully to school, and on the top of every paper he wrote, I am Little Prickles, quills and all. And that's the end. I hope you're having a great day. And I will talk to you again soon.